Hi, welcome to The Encounter. It is a look at Mark chapter 5. We're doing a slow roll through the passage, talking about the encounters that Jesus has because they are so vivid. We start with the demoniac. There's the crowds that come pressing in. It's the disciples there, the woman with the issue of blood, Jairus, Jairus' daughter. I mean, it is Jesus working and meeting people in a variety of ways at a point of need. In the last episode uh, in this limited series, we talked about the woman uh, who came to Jesus with that issue of blood and what it took for her to get there, what it meant, that healing, uh, and how um, amazing it was and how in our, our life we have to be willing to get to where Jesus is. We have to be willing to start that process and discover He's going to meet us um, and He's going to do what needs to be done because He knows what's best. Um, if you have ever felt like you're hanging by a thread, you know exactly what that woman in the passage felt like. I mean, you, you probably haven't had the same thing. Uh, maybe you have, but you probably haven't had the same thing. But you've had those moments where you were so stretched thin, you just didn't know what else to do. Um, interesting enough, she is nameless in Mark's encounter. He doesn't give her a name. Um, he just basically makes her a face in the crowd and identifies her by her illness. Um, we know in Mark 25 and 26, uh, she had spent all the money she had. She had expended every dime she had, and she was just getting worse. And so this is a person who isn't afraid to try something. She's tried everything. And again, I think that sets her apart because I think sometimes in these encounters we forget, well, last time we focused on the healing piece of it, you know, this is, um, for her, as we talked about in the last episode, I mean, this makes her an outcast. But on this day, I'm convinced if you start playing out in your mind's eyes, she was able to approach Jesus because all eyes were on Jesus and all eyes were on Jairus as they were anticipating what Jesus might do with Jairus' sick child. Um, you wonder if she had that moment as she was approaching. I can't interrupt him. I mean, he's on his way to do something that's really important. But then the other thought, I can't let this opportunity pass. And then her rationalizing how God could work this out. He doesn't need to stop. I don't even need to stop him. I don't even need to talk to him. I don't even need to call him by name. I don't need him to turn around. I don't need him to touch me. I'll just touch him and that will work. Where did that plan come from? I mean, she was willing to get close enough to Jesus just to touch his garment and convinced that that was going to be, I mean, that, if that didn't work, there was not going to be anything else that did. What kind of plan is that? It is one of the goofiest plans you could ever come up with, and yet that's the plan that she goes with, because when you're desperate, sometimes you go with those desperate plans. And so cling, clinging to hope, she takes a risk, and she does something daring. And when... She begins to navigate that crowd. No one notices her because they're so busy watching Jesus and Jairus and the disciples as they move. And so she manages to get there unnoticed. And she's trying, trying I'm sure, to keep her head down. She doesn't want to be seen. She doesn't want anybody to recognize her. In my mind's eye, I can, I can see her with head bent and maybe even hair falling across and protecting her face where maybe it gives her a shield, if you will, uh, masking who she is where no one sees. And he gets closer and she works herself into position, and she begins to crouch down. And she bends low, and she sticks her arm out between two others. For just a moment, her fingers somehow find the tip of the healer's garment. And for a split second, she's literally hanging by that thread as she touches it, and then in a blink, she suddenly feels she's well. I think sometimes we get so disconnected from Scripture because we read the stories. Can you imagine that? I mean, can you imagine being that sick, that desperate, and the biggest plan you had was just to touch the hem, the thread of his garment, and in the midst of you hanging by a thread, you get out and you finally find a way to get to that one place that you can touch, that thread, and just that quick, the plan worked. Well, then it goes horribly south because the, the moment 
of doing this and getting in, getting out, getting healed, see if it's going to work, all that just got, went and evaporated. Two things took place. One, she was healed, and she knew she was healed. And then Jesus stopped because he's Jesus. And he does what only Jesus can do. Who touched the hem of my garment? Scripture says he felt the power leave him. Now, you don't think for a minute that Jesus didn't know who touched him, do you? That's not the way he works. And I can see the disciples, the 12 stooges, kind of standing around looking back and forth and looking up and down and trying to figure out, okay, what's he talking about? You know, I can see Peter leaning in and saying to him, Jesus, man, I, there are so many people. I mean, we're, everybody's bumping into us. What do you mean, who touched you? It could have been anybody here in this crowd uh, not understanding what Jesus is really talking about. And Jesus said, no, no. And he turns and he sees and he has this encounter with this woman and she's made well and she meets Jesus and she discovers what she desperately needs. In our lives, sometimes it's good for us to remember that when we're hanging by a thread, Jesus still heals. And not only does he heal, but he knows what we need and he knows us and he sees us. See, I think the second part of the miracle is not just the woman being healed, but the woman went from being unseen and unnoticed to being seen and recognized and knowing that she's loved. Jesus' healing was not a Lone Ranger type of healing where, you know, she touched a garment and then he rode off into the sunset and she said, who was that mass savior? No. This was more of that moment where Jesus stopped and gave her and affirmed her in the completeness that she now had. And everything changed. Just another encounter that Jesus has on the road. Uh, come back and join me again as we continue our exploration of Mark chapter 5. Uh, and until then, read the passage again. And let's grow one more time, at least one more time in the passage.